Resolution is often the only spec quoted when referring to the fineness of a digital image, but there's actually much more to it than that. A 5 inch 1280 by 720 image will look sharp and crisp on your phone, but if you projected a 720p image in a movie theater, it would look horrible. So that, my friends, is where pixel density comes in, a measure of the resolution that also accounts for the size of the screen. PPI has become the most common way to denote pixel density, although pixels per centimeter, or PPC, can also be used. To calculate PPI, simply measure one inch diagonally on the screen, then draw a line diagonally through them and find out how many pixels it intersects with. So I heard higher pixel density is always better. Is that right? Well, sort of. The geek in me wants to say, yes, bring it on, more. But in reality, it requires advanced display technology and more processing power, so it's not always practical from a cost and manufacturing perspective to keep driving up pixel density. With older devices, there was tons of room for improvement. Diagonal lines looked like this, and circles even had an ugly staircase effect. But this has improved in recent years, and we've even begun to see displays where the eye cannot even pick out the individual pixels on the display. Once that point is reached, there's not much benefit to continuing to add cost and complexity to manufacturing, because most people won't notice anyway. Apple's branding for this good enough density concept is retina. But to determine if a display is retina, there's one last thing to consider. How far away are you gonna be from the display? IsThisRetina.com has a handy little tool for this, and according to their calculator, a 55 inch 1080p TV will have the same perceived pixel density from seven feet away as this 4.7 inch 1080p phone does from seven inches away. But there's more to a great display than how many pixels it has, of course. Contrast, color accuracy, and pixel response times impact the viewing experience tremendously, and different display types can even affect other things like the battery life of your device, improving power efficiency. Panel technologies also play a large role. For example, while both the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One have 1080p displays, the S4 uses a Pentile Matrix AMO LED display that has fewer dots on it overall, while the One uses a more standard LCD display with RGB subpixels. Click the link in the video description to learn more about this. Speaking of links in the video description, our sponsor for this episode is audible.com. Head over to audible.com slash techquickie to sign up and get a free audiobook. Now, I read the first one a few years ago, but I was browsing customer favorites today and saw that there's a prequel to Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Steve Hawkinsmith. You might wonder how a book released in 2010 could have been co-authored by Jane Austen, to which I would reply, duh, zombies. Anyway, guys, audible.com slash techwiki for your free audiobook today. There's tons of selection if you want something fun and light to listen to, like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, or for something more serious as well. Don't forget to subscribe to Tech Quickie for more fast as possibles like this. Like this video and leave a comment for us if you have any feedback.